This is the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast. Get your gloves ready. It's time to grab this podcast by the... Today on the podcast, we go over some of the events of BlizzCon, and of course, we talk about Sombra in the new PTR build of Overwatch. Killing Floor 2 is coming to the PS4. We talk about Double Fine's Day of the Devs. And finally, Toho, a Japan-only bullet hell shooter, makes its way to Western Shores in the PS4. Stick around, the fun's just about to begin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Insomniacs Anonymous Hello Podcast. Hello and welcome hey, to the Insomniacs not, not Anonymous Brian. Podcast. No. Brian, this Brian. is episode 25 Brian, for November stop. 8th. Stop. My name is Brian. Wrong. Oh, come on. You did it wrong. <laughs> Why? No. no. No, I, after I do, fine. after I introduce myself, so we do it. No, I just wanted to like right from the get go, just like completely take over. <laughs> and just, like, All right, run fine. Wild. Stop. Okay, <laughs> fine. We're all with it. No. Uh, okay, this is episode. He just wanted 25. you to believe he was going to interrupt you when you God interrupted yourself, so that now it was a true interruption. Exactly. Uh, okay, true. So let's just keep it going. It's episode 25 for November 8th, the day of the American apocalypse. So and uh, if you didn't and if you didn't hear before, my name is Brian and I am back, but let's let, let's hand it over back to Dude Run. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Whose nerves are so uh, ridiculously <laughs> racked now. Yeah, I was thrown <laughs> off by that bullshit. <laughs> thank you again for thank you for joining us again, Brian. It's good to have you. On a scale of one to ten, how rustled are your jimmies? Uh, <laughs> I want to say nine. <laughs> ten is reserved for like when I'm getting rolled in Overwatch. Oh god, that's and that's not pretty bad. Either. That is fairly bad. I've seen that fairly happen. Bad. It's uh, it, oh, it's yeah. cool. it's a sight to behold. You should have sure. seen me when I tried one v one earlier today in the PTR. <laughs> it was atrocious. I don't even want to imagine. I got yeah. nowhere. I gave up mid round both times. Just I let it happen. Just take. I my don't even want to know what that go. was like. Anyway, getting yeah. a little off track. I am Dude Run. I I'm a YouTuber. Brian already introduced <laughs> himself rudely, and we are also joined by our good friend Shro. Yep. Who is Hi. still deciding on who he's voting for today? I hear. Yeah, my entire purpose today is going to be providing anecdotal nonsense about my obnoxiously long ballot. <laughs> well, I, guess I guess it's not it's... too obnoxious, because I've been hearing that California has been, like, just shitting out issues as fast as they can, because it's a thing, and, like, uh, referendums and all this. So, like, their ballot's actually a small book. But... Jeez. Yeah. That's insane. Just remember, Shro, the future of America is in your hands. Um, not yeah. Unless if you're hands. holding your penis right now, then not so much, you it's know? It's in but your just, other hand. I mean, it's Are you saying my penis hand. can't be the future of America? <laughs> well, it, it, in a way, it really is, right? I mean, procreation and everything, you know? So, yeah, you're right, yeah. Actually, before you got in here, I was talking about all the websites about politicians, like their bios, for some reason, just... They they're compelled to include like their their spousal and progeny history, and so I'm sitting here going like, what is with politicians and breeding? Like I swear, every single one of these motherfuckers has three or four kids at least. Stop breeding! I'm gonna cut your junk off. <laughs> Jesus fucking soul, Christ! Bro. And it's funny because some of them really should it. not be breeding, anyways. You know, I mean, it's like. The people that yeah, shouldn't yeah, breed always breed, and the people that should breed don't because they either can't this or just don't This is literally the basis like of the movie Idiocracy. Indeed. Yeah. Which is quickly becoming a prophecy. This is that Comedy Central movie where everybody's dumb as shit except for these two people, right? I don't know if it actually came through Comedy Central, but it is a comedy, and yeah, it, the idea is that uh, in like 2500, as in the year, uh, the entire world's population is populated by people that have an IQ of like 60. Hey. <laughs> Retarded, and I mean that in the actual scientific term, is 
like an IQ of 80 or 90, I think. Mm -hmm. The average IQ is like 100, 110. 110. Um, so, so yeah. That the then the entire movie premise is that uh, these two people get put in suspended animation, and they their suspended animation ends in the uh, new era of stupid humans, and because they are average people from the present day, they are leaps and bounds exponentially smarter than the populace of the future. And the populace of the future exists because all the smart people are like, well, we probably shouldn't have kids now, or maybe one, or whatever. Well, meanwhile, you know, Jim Bob the Redneck is fucking everything that moves, including <laughs> the family dog. So... <laughs> And th that's literally the opening sequence of the movie is is the, the two family trees. This one couple that's like the smart couple that like, I think the guy after many fertility problems ends up like dying during an ejaculation or something because comedy. And then the other guy that has a family tree that's like an incestuous network of spider webs. Um. <laughs> Yeah, man. that sounds intense. It, it's a great movie. It's absolutely hysterical, but it is absolutely pure, condensed, concentrated nightmare fuel for me at the same time because Whoa. I look at that movie as just prophetic. <laughs> Nowadays, yeah, it seems like it might be coming true. Mm hmm. <clears throat> It'll be really interesting to see, anyways, who. Uh, who takes the gold tonight, you know? And by gold, I yeah, mean... Yeah, that's for sure. It'll yeah, certainly be interesting. Slightly shinier turd. Exactly. Who will be the shinier little turd? Wait, no, that's not the what I The brave means. little turdster. <clears throat> the brave little turdster. Yes, I agree, phone. Mm. So, I mean, do we know when results will be posted? Um, well, so all of the polls will put out numbers periodically throughout the day. So, and plus on top of that, you get the news organizations that are going to like harass voters as they leave the polls and try to scoop people for what they're actually, um, doing and saying mm -hmm. and voting for. And by those methods, you get a lot of these quote early voting statistical results um, I don't really go for those or pay attention to them because it's really just hearsay. Uh, so the polls actually close at eight in most places. Um, and then it's all time zone based. So we're all East coast. So we're the first line. So when our polls close, other ones later down in the country are still going. So the true results won't be until like midnight 1 a.m and you still got to wait for some of that shit to report so really if you want the true results it's like tomorrow morning but most of the time unless it's a really close election you'll see the results by 10 p.m 11 p.m because most polls have closed the higher populated states are all in the east coast so you you know you can base your statistics a little better because you already have a lot of the vote counted by that point so also apparently there's our our weekly telegram interruption <laughs> i think it's gone on a little longer than just one interruption but indeed whatever indeed <sighs> so yeah it, it's yeah the american apocalypse is happening oh yeah we're screwed all of us oh, are screwed, yeah. including everyone outside of America. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. So anyway. Well, I mean, what's the, what's happening lately? What are you guys up to? You know, like gaming-wise, is there anything fun and interesting uh, that's been nope, happening everything sucks. in the news? I've been playing Mr. President for YouTube. Oh, what's that about? It's a game where you are a bodyguard for a president, a.k.a. Ronald Rump. Hint, hint. And he's about to get <laughs> sniped, and you have to take either take the bullet for him or tackle his ass. 
It's a it's a it's a physics game. So weird shit's oh, cool. happening as game? you're trying to tackle him. It it it's just hilarity ensues. I just love it because you get to tackle a guy named Ronald Rump. Mm hmm. While money just falls from the sky behind him. There's one level where tacos fall onto him. Tacos! Ta yeah, like giant tacos just fall on his face and crush him. So, do you protect him by leaping in front of him, opening up your mouth, and eating the tacos? No, you just kind of tackle him out of the way when the tacos drop. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's still, you know, that's still cool, but... It's still pretty be ridiculous awesome if you the could tacos just, like, are raining from the sky to crush him. It is! Him. I mean, you know, who who exactly, you know, it's like, it, well, I mean, it's obviously the Mexicans that are plotting that assassination. Mexican gods, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's like, I, I thought it would have been cool if you were able to just, like, eat all the tacos, you know, because tacos are cool, and they're good. Well, they are good and, and stuff, delicious. but I'd rather have fajitas. Fajita says oh, it's yeah. better than a taco. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, it's a custom made That's taco. That you That's my song yourself. for the fajitas. Well, all right, then. copyright it. Patent pending. So, <laughs> so that seems like a pretty cool game, you know. I mean, if especially if it's something like Ronald, what was it, Ronald? Ronald Trump? Rump. Ronald Rump. Yes. Perfect. So, you know, basically you could be the worst bodyguard ever and just watch him die over and over and over and, and I over, did. And <laughs> over I did. again. Oh, no, he's dead. Oh, no. Oh, I was over darn. here looking at this Gosh pretty butterfly and fuck. the taco just came down and fell on his head and it killed him. Gosh, oh. diddly fuck, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, <yeah. laughs> what will America ever do? Oh, no. <laughs> we're fine now. Oh man, now uh, we have to rebuild everything in the oh, have to you know, tear in down the that wall that we built. We're gonna have to tear down that wall we built. We're gonna have to, you know, rebuild give everything the, from the ground up in a modernized society. We're gonna have to give away all that money that he had behind him to charities and people that actually fucking need it. Exactly. My yeah, god, that's a great. lot of work we have to do now. Close those government <laughs> loopholes. Oh yeah. So that does seem pretty fun, actually. Yeah, it is perfect. I'll have to check that out. I the last uh, the last video that I checked recently, and it wasn't one of your latest ones, but it was the Stardew Valley one. Uh, just because Stardew Valley is I was gonna awesome. Say, you you've been on... cracking the fuck out on Stardew Valley. I kind of have a little bit, but I've kind of stopped. That's um, actually my problem with Factorio. I feel bad. Maybe if Crutch actually listens to this, he'll he'll. <laughs> we've played so much Factorio that I'm like, I'm so fucking burned out on Factorio right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep saying, like, no, I've really got to clean or do something, or I'm. Uh, those actually aren't lies. I'm not making it up. I do have to do other shit. It's just like I don't want to play right now. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I should actually look at my Steam. I think. I've managed to rack up like 70 hours plus in that game, and I've only had it for a few weeks. Good fuck, man. Wow. That's pretty nuts. 78 hours, yep. Um, yeah, I never, I don't ever want to crack out on a game like that. Oh, that was part of my problem why I left Minecraft as hard as I did when when Tech It and Feed the Beast went belly up, and uh, we did that, and it just happened to coincide with a new school year for me. Wait, just, wait, like, what do you like, mean? What do you mean it went belly up? Well, Tech It went belly up because they're, all the mod packs they pulled from it, um, they, they did so without actually telling the mod makers. Oh, no. They, well, that's why we went to Feed the Beast, remember? You know what? This was so I mean, long ago. I, I never actually oh, got into right. Feed the Beast. Yeah, it, for some reason, was... my computer, my computer at the time, just like didn't want to make it work or something. So that's why. Huh. That's the All reason right. why I actually ended up not playing with you guys with uh, Feed the Beast was because I couldn't. Oh, I yeah. see. I don't remember that part. So no, yeah, we're teaching each so, other again. Exactly. Yeah, no. The reason we uh, we're getting we... to know each other it's once again. The but yeah, no, uh, made a, yeah. um. Yeah, it was all because Tekkit um, 
was, I mean, Minecraft was itself updating. And so that would screw up mods uh, that had to be updated to compensate. And then TechIt was a package of a bunch of mods that were put together without the consent of many of the mod makers. So the mods would conflict with each other. And then you had you know, people that burned out and didn't update their stuff. And so tech, it fell apart because it had a lack of support. Um, and so a lot of times it bugged out, glitched out, didn't work and feed the beast went the other route and said, you know, we'd like to make all these different packs, but we're going to make packs that are meant to run together and, you know, work together with each other. And we're going to do it with the support of the people that are actually making them like bucket and all that stuff. And Bucket kind of got incorporated into Minecraft Core, but the uh, the rest of it, yeah, that's why we switched to Feed the Beast, because it was just a lot more stable. Cool. All right, well, that's good and to know. And then we didn't so... have a server, and, you know, everybody's like, you know, we've kind of racked up thousands of hours doing this. We should kind of get back to a life. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good days, though. I remember our oh days God, when, you know, we great. had our little server, and yeah. I'm hoping I, if they only... bring it back. Actually, if only we could. Um, again, my only concern is the actual internet speeds that my family is subjected to, which is something I've ranted out about previously, so I'll, I'll sans that part. But um, uh, the hardware that I needed to finally connect my old gaming computer to the network, because mm -hmm. I don't have multiple Wi-Fi cards, um, that hardware has arrived but at a friend's house because he has amazon prime and i do not so i i intended to actually pick that up last week but uh he lives a decent bit away and our plans to get together failed so oh. when i get that i should be able to bring that computer back online and start programming it to be a server for various things so i'm thinking at least the easy stuff would be like tf2 and Terraria and Starbound. Um, I would look into Stardew Valley. I know nothing about it, but if it has a dedicated server client, that might work too. I think um, they're working on a co-op right now, but it's just going to be co-op, so it's not going to be any kind of persistent server. Oh, uh, okay. At least for now. I mean, it is one dude who's making this game, right? So it's like... Is it really? Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's not so much like a, like a Minecraft thing operation, right, at this moment. It's just one dude. Like Minecraft early days, it was one dude, right? But then he hired people and the game got huge and all this. But Stardew Valley is still very humble. From what I know. Fair enough. But you know what? I'd totally be down for like a Starbound, um, for Starbound server. Especially after they updated it. I played a little yeah, bit of it. And it was like really good. Yet. It was really good. I liked it. I've heard good things, yeah, since they made that change. Mm-hmm. I like the whole quest thing that they have for it now. It's a lot better. That's good. Yeah. I've also uh, decided that if we do manage to get servers running, that I think part of our problem with our servers, like we've had like three Terraria servers, and um, we end up going to play them. We all play for like three weeks or so, and we advance the server, and then we don't know what to do with it. And so we stop playing. So it's I think what happens. I, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just right off the bat say, you know, every server is gonna reset like, I don't know, every four, six, eight weeks or something. And the old mm -hmm. version will be saved and put up that people could grab it. But um but yeah, I think that would actually keep people going and that way I think we can have less of the is everybody on? Can I kill this boss? Can we like do it as a group? No, okay, oh great, I guess I'll wait or not wait or whatever and yeah like, see actually you know what you, you do it because it'll reset yeah so you see you saying that completely like that's how i kind of wanted to run the uh, vanilla you know the minecraft realm server that i had for a while there mm -hmm. that's um, kind of how i wanted to run that one you know like we would have it for like maybe like a a couple of weeks we would do everything and then after that i would reset it back up and we start back up again from you know from ground zero because sometimes the funnest part really is the beginning you know like whenever you're like all just trying to survive and not trying to get killed by zombies you're just like all oh right. my god put up that wall but it's ugly it's a mud wall just put it up it's all dirt you know so it's like 
I remember right. uh, when we. I remember the one server we had back in the old IA days, with um, when uh, Kodiak was running it. I think, and I think it was me myself. It was uh, Ranieri and Dude Run. I think that first night or two when we were <laughs> being chased around by like creepers, just trying to build our own little, <laughs> our own little hut. Those were good times, man. I don't remember oh, that, but I wish I did. Fuck. <laughs> those are good days. Yeah. Oh, I miss those people. I agree, though. Like the beginning is you. The beginning part of the survival aspect is just sometimes the best. And mm -hmm. after you get far into it and you get diamond shit, you don't need to worry about that. It's like, oh hey, I'm gonna exactly. go face roll some creepers. <laughs> just walk right over them. They yeah, blow they up. They explode. It's like, they do nothing yeah. to you. You just you're fine. You're like There's the no... Terminator, you know. It's like you just I'll get back, back together, and you're good. And then you just go. I'll be back. look at a creeper, and then it dies. <laughs> oh man! For some reason, that just reminded me. I don't know if you guys have seen this YouTube video, but it's apparently a mod for the old school Doom thing. And instead of a gun, he holds up a boombox, <laughs> and uh, and uh, he presses like the on button, and then it's the uh, the Rick roll. The, you know, the never gonna give you up. And then all of a sudden, like everything in range, start everything in sight starts dying because as soon as he turns it on, like all the mods are like, <laughs> it's amazing. Like they're all getting <laughs> and like torn to death. For some wow. reason, it just reminded me of that. Yeah. But yeah, we we really need to get another server up and going, though. That would be really cool. Yeah, I'd be down for that. My my concern for, as I said, my main concern is just bandwidth limitation, um, mm -hmm. and on that. And so smaller games definitely help there. But I know from a fact from because my first Minecraft server days weren't actually IA, but they were playing on the Reddit MC Craft server, um, and. That is obnoxiously huge. We're talking like two to three hundred concurrent players at a time. Um, I, I remember playing in that, and during peak hours, you had to actually just anticipate lag. Oh. So you'd like you'd hold your mouse down for like half a second to mine something, knowing that when the lag caught up, you would have actually mined like four blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but I, I know from reading their stats and even just for the smaller servers for what Kodiak had that you really need a beastly server capable mm -hmm. machine. Mm -hmm. So you not only need a good CPU, which I can kind of provide, but you needed, I think the, the Minecraft server for Reddit, which again is huge, but it, it had upwards of like 64 gigabytes of RAM plus. Holy crap. So... Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, definitely. Yeah. It's it's something we're gonna have to look into, and uh, you know, yeah. Hopefully, we'll we'll get it uh, up and running sometime in the near future. I'm looking forward to it. For sure. Me too. Mm -hmm. So okay, guys, you guys may have heard, you know, about this. Maybe not, but BlizzCon just happened like this last weekend. The fuck is BlizzCon? Okay, so let me let me school you here, boy. BlizzCon is like this con con. It's a yeah, it's a con, but it's, it's a, a convention. convention. It's a convention. It's a yes. con. It's the same thing. Unless and you're talking about a con as in like you know when people. someone is like, it does right. Like a con is like a con artist. You know when you get yeah. conned. It could mean that as well. But anyways, it's a convention, a Blizzard convention. And if you don't know who Blizzard is, then like what the fuck are you doing listening to this podcast? Beep. Sorry. Sorry for the swear there. Pardon my French. But anyways, okay, so Blizzard, you know, like World of Warcraft. <laughs> you know, World of Warcraft, uh, Diablo, StarCraft, and of course, Overwatch now. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's basically a convention for all those games, and it's pretty cool because you get, you know, they make like special announcements, and uh, you, you get to listen to the developers talk about the game, how they go about doing the things that they do. And uh, it happened this last weekend, and they unveiled, finally gave us all the details about Sombra, which is a new Overwatch character that they are adding to the game. So we finally know. Um, we finally know more about this character. That I, I, I swear, they. I feel like they've been teasing us for like months. They months. have. They it's have. 
It's ridiculous, it honestly. It hurts my face <laughs> when I look in the I past. <laughs> I feel if only they would have, like, you know, started maybe, like, two months ago as opposed to, like, I don't know, how long was it? Five months Six? ago? Six? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the game The game hasn't been out that long yet, dude. <laughs> it probably could, might as well have been hinting at it from the beginning. I, it, honestly, yeah. It, honestly, it feels like it feels like it's been at least half a year. It's crazy. Ugh. I but love, in any case, I love Sombra, but I hate how they went with the ARG in this. It it took way too what? long to get any information mm-hmm. coming from like right after Anna's reveal, which was just a quick, oh hey, we're releasing a new hero. Here's this teaser, and then that we was get it. a short, and then we get a PTR thing for a week, and then she's out, and that was yep. all done in like two weeks. Exactly. Yeah, we get like. God knows how many months of Sombra, and I'm <laughs> sick of hearing it now. I honestly, I got legitimately, I got tired of it. Yeah. I was like, I don't care. Do you not care anymore? Let's just die, die, die. You know, like that was yeah. pretty much me at one point. So it finally came out, you know, and it was cool because it's kind of like a hacker character, you know? So, like, yeah. a hacker character. Hacker. So. A hacker, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, I guess that's why they did the whole ARG thing, you know. And it was actually, you know, what it was a really cool reveal. Like, if you were watching the stream, they yeah. were doing a retrospective on like Overwatch, which was really weird. It's like, guys, the game just came out like a few months ago. You're doing like a retrospective on it. That's kind of weird. So, you know, they're going along and they're just being like, oh yeah, you know, and like the day when we were about to launch the game, it was amazing. Like we were all so like, you know, nervous and blah blah. And all of a sudden, the screen just started to kind of like, like almost like your internet connection was going bad, you know, like it started to like lag a bit stutter and then the voices got kind of weird and you're like, holy shit, wait a second, something's happening here. And it's just not my internet connection. And all of a sudden, boom, the screen goes black and then it turns back on again. And there's Sombra and they're announcing that it's the video, the uh, infiltration, the short infiltration video. Yes. And it was amazing the way that they did it. I thought it was super cool. Because, you know, how, like, um, the the opening lines, it was something, like, something along the lines of, like, oh, that was easy. Like, I thought the this was supposed to be, like, the greatest, uh, was it, Most like, advanced security system in the world. Exactly, you know? So, it's like, holy crap, man. Like, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool reveal. Uh, yeah, we had to wait a long time for it, but you know what? It's, at the very least, it was a very cool reveal. And, uh, yeah, they went along, and they gave us everything that we needed to know. So... Now that we've we now that she's out in the PTR, Dude Run and I have had a chance to play around with Sombra and against Sombra. And uh, I mean, and let me know what do you versus think, dude? Six like, person Sombra. Yeah, <laughs> it really that's had what a, it was. We had a six team, six person Sombra team. It eventually became mm-hmm. a five person to a three person. But yeah, it, it was exactly. kind of nuts. I like how she handles, but I'm probably never gonna play her. I've I tend to avoid all the damage dealing classes because I don't well, from what I've style. heard I, I know I'm not exactly well versed in overwatch stuff ha- not even having the game but uh, from what I've heard uh, Sombra is not a damage dealing class that she's more of a trickster fuck around support class she's um, classified as a damage dealer in game mm-hmm. and I think really for the reason that if you're really if you have really good aim you can do a lot of damage because her her clip is actually like very it's a very long clip that she it's has a 60 gun. round magazine yeah yeah and i mean even tracer she's she's uh she's an attack yeah class. she only has now, like, i guess attack yeah she's mm-hmm. attack yeah and now now necessarily attack i guess does not really mean that they're going high to damage hard, dealer yeah. per se but it's really good at advancing your team forward, I believe. You know, yeah. like some people like are the, just the whole... like harassment more than damage. Exactly. Dealing. So, like, I mean, you you zip in there with tracer, eh? you know, you get to, you get on the point, and all of a sudden, you know, the enemy team they're like, "Holy shit, there's someone on our point!" And then, you know, if and there's you... a lack of communication, the entire team ends up like backtracking, and those are the moments when your team can take advantage of that. So, in a way, that is, I believe, you know, attack is a very wide umbrella as to like what it means that it yeah. is. But yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. True. It's it's, she's not a really hard damage dealer 
but uh, she definitely goes along the same lines of Tracer that uh, it's good for pushing, for pushing your team yeah. forward. She's very much a backline the- offense. Mm-hmm. As in, like, she goes into the enemy's back line and touches their butts. Exactly. It makes yeah. them all feel uncomfortable. Well, she's got, like, what? She's got that SMG. She's got stealth ability. She, mm-hmm. as I read and still think is perhaps the most hilarious description oh, of an ability ever is she stealth runs into a pack of enemies farts out an emp blast and is then too squishy and dies <laughs> uh, uh, thank you reddit yeah, by pretty the way. much i did go to reddit asking what people thought of sombra and it seems pretty positive whoa, 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 hold on i need to back up that's right. your thread that's my thread yes it says do run and stop that. at the top there how do you not see that i I don't know. Mr. I read the post. I, I don't know. I, I read things. I actually can't find the thread now. What the hell did I do with it? There are too it's many tabs. On, it's on the <laughs> uh, the notes there at the very bottom. I, I, I know that, but I already there had it go. opened once. Well, then just open it again, Mr. I have a billion tabs open at one time. But then I'll have two tabs. That's all I have open, and it's more it's organized not even than what And I know what's going on now. Anyway, we're getting off track. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> response from boring. Reddit at least seems to be pretty positive overall. But some well, people have said she's like a trickster, and that's pretty much exactly what she is. I agree, but mm-hmm. my one gripe about I feel about the biggest her... change. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. My one gripe about her so far is the you can hack a healing node, a health node, and apparently that lasts for like a minute. When that node is hacked, you can only your team can access that health node, and the uh, refresh for that health pack is increased as well. But while that thing is hacked, your enemy cannot take a health pack. I think that lasts and I feel way like, too fucking yeah. long. <laughs> it does last way too long. And I, you know what? I'm not a fan of that ability in general, just because I feel like it's way too overpowered. Like it's just, it, it affects mm-hmm. everybody, you know? And it's just yeah. like, it, it's a, it, it is a complete game, t- a game changer, you know? Like, I mean, well, so here would be my interesting input there. in that, that kind of just sounds like a, just turning a, normal node point into a dispenser in tf2 and dispensers aren't that broken uh, if broken at all yeah, but, but you can the destroy thing is with a dispenser, dispenser you can you always destroy, destroy it this. right but it's only a minute yeah but you know how long a minute lasts in overwatch that's like a fifth of the match right there so my other then thought would be to compare it on if somebody from any team on normal levels picks up that health pack how long does it take to respawn like i think t- three what, times 20 seconds three times shorter of a re- normal respawn time which i think is about 20 seconds on average for the largest health pack mm-hmm. maybe, maybe like 15, so that's like 10 so 15 20 somewhere between the range of six to three times in a minute yeah, all yeah. I know is that this is really going to screw up my Reaper game because I depend on a lot of those health packs that are like in behind enemy lines, you know? So it's going to make things very difficult for me. I don't know how I'm going to go back to... We're, we're never going to be able to go back to this current moment right now where those health packs really are a free-for-all, you know? Yeah. Uh, forever, another... forever going to change the game in a huge way. And I'm a little... Uh, I'm a little hesitant about that whole thing, but you know, it's too, there's nothing we can do about it. Especially considering, I mean, to be like, honest, it sounds like something that they can tweak the variables on pretty easily. Oh, yeah. They they will, I'm sure. But like, it, it, it would be awesome shit. if uh, it would be awesome. Like, you know, if uh, okay, let's say you have a um, a sombra on the enemy team hacks the med pack or the health pickup, and then you have your own sombra comes in there and hacks the hacked med pack. That would be kind of cool. I think like that could, you know, 
Yeah, that could. That would at least alleviate work, yeah. some of the situation. So you can but do it's that not to possible any number as of right health now. packs, though. Not just one at a time. You can hack one at a time, but that yeah, first you have hack a twelve. Still you have a twelve effect. second. You have a twelve second cooldown, though, in between yeah. hacks. So you, you know, there's there is only a certain amount of limited health packs you can technically have because of that cooldown. You know, before yeah. the, the other one runs out. But yes, dude, run is correct that. It, you do not have an actual limit as to like how many you can hack. I think there should be like a one at a time limit just to allow people to use different health packs, or you could just cheat them out of a health pack at the last minute with like a 30 second cooldown, a one time limit. You end up getting a kill and that's it. Mm hmm. And maybe just yeah. helping your team by hacking the huge health pack so they have access to it and the enemy does not. Exactly. So I still feel like there's definitely going to be some tweaking going on, you know, like, I mean, it's it's still just a PTR. So hopefully, hopefully she's not too overpowered by the time competitive season three comes around. Oh, yeah, totally. Because that would suck so much. It would. Um, Diablo three news, because, you know, guys, you know, even though I don't really play a lot of Diablo 3, I still really like Diablo 3. Mm. But uh, they've announced a new class for Diablo 3. Probably, honestly, like normally the wizard is my hands down favorite class. But I feel like this potentially might be my new favorite class, which is the Necromancer. Nice. And uh, I, if you guys haven't seen him yet, like he looks really cool. They've like kind of modeled him like. Oh, they've kind of given him like a like a rock star kind of look, you know, like so he looks like very badass. He's got like some really cool abilities. Like he's got this one ability which is called like Army of the Dead. And you see like all these skeletons just kind of pop out of the ground and just like like hundreds of skeletons pop out of the ground and just like go and attack a single target. It looks amazing. So I'll have to look at that later. So this is like the Diablo three edge Lord kind of thing, you know? So <laughs> but it's, everything's uh, an edge Lord in Diablo three. <laughs> this no, but this is the epitome of edge Lordiness. The epitome. <laughs> what did I say? Epitome. Yeah. You said epitome. Whatever. You know what I meant? You knew what I, I mean, meant? It kind of looks like that. I'll give you credit. I've never yeah. actually thought of that, but I mean, I used okay, to, I I used was to spelling pronounce it that actual... way too. Yeah. Epitome. epitome. I, I was commanding the other night, and I put down a tome of power, and I spelled it tomb. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh shit! A <laughs> tomb of power. That's a very different item. <laughs> One that doesn't actually exist in that game, but probably <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! So yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. But we do have to wait a little while before it comes out. It's coming out in like. <sighs> Some sometime in 2017. Yeah. So, yeah, you still got to wait for that one. But what's coming out soon, though, is the 20th anniversary of the first Diablo game remade in Diablo 3. So oh God, you're going to be able to play. You're going to be able to play the original Diablo game in all of its pixelated, low res quality glory inside Diablo 3 remade. Oh, I thought you'd meant like I'd be playing Diablo One's campaign in Diablo Three, not like yes, low quality stuff and all that, like the original was. Exactly, so it's going to look. It's they've tried to make it as similar as they can to the original experience. Oh, yeah, no along worries. with all the music, you know, all the music sound quality is going to sound like a, like the late '90s, you know, it's going to or the mid '90s, whatever. Um, graphic wise, the direction that your character moves in, it's only going to be able to move in eight directions, I believe, just like in the old game. Ooh, that eight directional analog stick. Yes. So, so that'll be fun. That's coming out fairly soonish. I think the PTR is coming in sometime this week. So interesting. Actually, funny, a lot of my world versus world um, playing friends when we get done with our rally is the ones that stay up later because they're Pacific Coast. Um, they have lately all been going to play Diablo 3 <laughs> after nice. Guild Wars. Awesome. So I, I'm, I've been hearing more and more Diablo 3 stuff just because I stay in the chat as I do my own thing and I hear them, go to this rift! No, you can't do that! 
you gotta gotta keep that gem. No, don't. Why are you using this helmet? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You gotta introduce me to these people. I might like to join up on some Diablo three goodness. Oh, I'm sure they'd let you join. They're all super friendly. Awesome. Um. So yeah. So that's that should be happening somewhat soon. So very excited about that. And um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, you know, there's some some World of Warcraft stuff. Sorry, what was that, Troy? No, no. Go ahead. I just remembered something I should put in the notes because of our previous conversation. Tell me about World of Warcraft. What the fuck are they up to now? You know what? I didn't really pay that much attention to World of Warcraft, actually. Okay, never mind. So moving yeah. on. Actually, I do have something for World of Warcraft. I don't know what it means um, because I don't know much about World of Warcraft, but it sounds like the Nostalaria server and something known as Elysium. Um, uh, it's another private server. Okay. Uh, apparently, those are things that are sort coming of back. coming back. Yeah, I, Nostalgia is saw releasing that, yeah. their source code to Elysium, and they're probably going to have some iteration of Nostalgia's backup soon. I don't know when. It just depends on when the source code for Nostalgia is released, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Good to have yeah, that. Yeah, so back. that totally looks gonna... cool. Hop in on that whenever that comes back around, because I'm too poor for World of Warcraft. Let me know. I might just join you up on that, because um, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of in the wow mood, but not really lately, so it's a little hard to justify spending the $20 if I'm only going to play for a few hours. All right, I will let you know. Yeah, I know uh, somebody that actually... I honestly don't know why they did this. I certainly wouldn't have, but I guess one of their friends was feeling down from some relationship trouble and so they're like well i don't have anyone to play in wow anymore do you want to like join up and follow and so they did but then they like didn't play for like more than an hour and so now now my acquaintance is like yeah i spent all this money and we're not doing anything i'm like <laughs> um well i wouldn't have done that so yeah, no nope, <laughs> not. yeah i'm not gonna help people uh you know, drown in their own tears by playing a game that I don't exactly. already have. Exactly. So. So maybe you could join us for some private server shenanigans? Uh, later maybe. on? Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm trying to cool. figure out how that actually worked because I was talking to some other friends because the uh, one of the, the fuzzy groups that I'm part of, a lot more of them play WoW than Guild Wars. Mm -hmm. And... So, uh, a few of them were on the Nostralia server, and the fact that I thought when I first saw the news of Nostralia is coming back that it was, um, you know, Blizzard had agreed to let us do this thing, and they're going to help us, blah, 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 and then I find out that it's, oh, no, they've actually sat on their, you know, with their thumbs up their ass, <laughs> and have done nothing, so we're just kind of kind of go, yep, here it is, we're going to do this again, because we can i guess so i'm kind of just expecting this whole scenario to repeat itself where you know blizzard will get mad again and start going after people and i don't think they were really mad our legal department was but i don't think they themselves were mad because they seem to show interest in vanilla servers again and that's what nostalgia was right and that's why i thought they were gonna like actually um you know, do stuff. They might, but I don't know. It, maybe they were just busy this time and still need to figure out a way to work around shit and get paperwork going. They gotta plan it carefully so they can still protect their IP without, like, making people mad, I guess. Right. And I guess that's my, um, my general thought is that until they really get that whole thing figured out, I might still stay away from it. Fair enough. Fair enough. So what else do we have going on in the news? Well, uh, Killing Floor 2 is coming to the PlayStation 4. <clears throat> awesome. I've never actually played that game. Like, I... I, um... I'm imagining there's some killing on floors happening. 
Yes, and there secret. is. All oh, right, well, tell me more a about very it. accurate assumption going <laughs> on there. <laughs> uh, Killing Floor is a survival horror game where you and five other players have to survive an onslaught of mutants rather than zombies. But yeah, some genetic scientist went nuts and decided to make better humans, and they all became monsters. And he thinks of them as their own chil- as his own children, so you kill enough of them, you survive enough waves of these monsters, and then you fight the main guy who treats them all like their children. And that's basically I killing floor. Each, each player can pick a perk, which uh, gives them more bu- gives them buffs for whatever weapons they use. So sharpshooter gets more headshot damage. Demolitionist gets more explosive damage. Mm-hmm. Commando would get more uh, damage for rifles. Okay, etc. Killing Floor Two is the second iteration of this. Of course, it's on a much better engine. I think I've not personally played it. I don't have the money for it, but I do have Killing Floor 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's coming to the PlayStation 4 very soon. It's currently in beta, I think. Codes were already handed out on Twitter. And I hope it goes well. Hmm. Good to see that they're on a console again, finally. Indeed. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Their first iteration on the console, I think, was the Ouya. I think that's how you pronounce it. That little uh, so, independent yeah. console. Right. Yeah, it was a top-down like shooter rather than a first-person shooter like the original Killing Floor was. Mm-hmm. But good to see them on a console. Very nice. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I'll have to try that game out then sometime because it does sound fairly fun. It is. You get to kill the uh, you get to kill the children, and then after that, after killing enough of the kids, you get to kill the daddy. Yes. Apparently, oh, uh, yeah. Killing Floor Two changed how the daddy works a little bit, and that he can hold you in place and kill you if your team doesn't do enough damage. <laughs> and oh. before he'd just kind of like fire gu- your his guns and rockets at you, and. Mm-hmm. Be all like, save me, my children! You murdered my children! Prepare to die! And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Big Dada. You killed that's, my children. Prepare to die. That's kind of it, really. <laughs> 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 Voice and everything. <laughs> uh, so is it like a first-person shooter? Or like it's a, a third-person person? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I really will need to try that out. All right, so tell me, well, well, what else is happening? How about we read some old man Henderson there, Shro? That's a thing we can do. All righty. Uh, this one is slightly long because it's director's cut, but it's not really long enough for me to uh, chunk it up. And on top of that, this entire section is about how our... Um, side player, not Waffle House Millionaire, that is the creator of Old Man Henderson, but one of the other players in his group is telling us the director's cut episodes and in this particular episode managed to kill his character many, many times. So, uh, oh, the player that I'm reading from goes by the alias a self-called Nowhere. We'll just call him Nowhere. So I got enough free time to do the story of Henderson's hat trick. While killing a god is cool and all, that happens a lot in tabletop games. Granted it was a first for a Call of Cthulhu inspired game, but I digress. Henderson has another record that I find far more irritating and entertaining for obvious reasons. Henderson is the only player character I've ever seen to manage to kill the same player's characters four times in a single session. Namely, my character, too. The bastard. (laughs) I'm going to type this... 
technically I mistyped the end of the last thread. I re-rolled three times in one sitting, but I already had one character ready to go at the beginning, so that's four characters. When we first arrived for the game that day, I was determined to not get upset at a character death because that had happened a few times already. It's just a game. It's all pretend. I failed miserably eventually. I don't even remember the name of my first character. The session began with the cultists using a mob front planning to kill the son of a rival crime family. Incidentally, the same one Jim used to work for. I was playing the role of the bodyguard and I was quickly knocked out and thrown into the trunk of a car while the kid was loaded into the back seat of another car. Enter stage left, Henderson and Will. They see them wacky cultists up to no good, and they decide to nick the vehicle with the vis visible hostage. While Will hotwired it, Henderson punched a hole in the gas tank of this, their second car and lit it off. They then sped away after unknowingly leaving my character to burn alive, screaming in the trunk of the second car. Approximate elapsed time between the start of the session and first character death? Two minutes and 30 seconds. I promptly rolled up a second character and agreed with the GM that I should wait until a more appropriate time to join the scene than in the middle of a drive across town. They then decided to pull off to a bar to uh, help the kid with his uh, mob boss problem. My second character of the evening's name was Ronald. Ronald was a used car salesman coming off the tail end of a bad divorce in which his wife gained all their worldly possessions and then promptly killed herself and left it all to the new church she had found. The Disciples of the Yellow King. Wacky cultists. At this point in time, he was playing darts. Unbeknownst to him, a cultist from that church was just let loose a powerful entropy curse after the car that was stolen from them. A curse with a very specific target. The brake lines of the car coming in for a hard stop just outside. Ronald looked at the perfect game he was playing and felt genuine joy for the first time in weeks. Then he was ripped in half by a BMW that came crashing through the brick wall behind him. This was less than 10 minutes after the first death of the evening. <sighs> Henderson gets out of the car and the bartender with the mob connections immediately puts a gun in his face. What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? Trying to ask out a young man to safety. Damn cultist must have cut the brake lines. The bartender then recognizes the Don's son and calls him over to see if he's alright. Danny, the boy, is confused but mostly unhurt. This ended up saving Henderson's life, but the GM soundly refused to let me just take control of such a politically powerful character just to get back into the game quicker. So I started to roll up another character, a cop, looking into a lead in a weird house across town. A weird house connected to a cold case that his old friend Al asked about immediately before his mysterious death in the middle of a huge explosion of a gas trucker. A place that the mob had just told Henderson and Will should have, have answers for some of the questions they have as a favor for saving their son. They get there after me and open the door to creep inside. I've already investigated the upstairs and found notes saying something about a lab in the basement. Henderson, in the meantime, had gone straight down on the logic of, what the hell kind of evil cultist just fucks around in the living room when they have a creepy-ass cellar to play with? He finds an old summoning circle down in the cellar and decides to spit in its general direction, accidentally activating it as he walks out the far door. Finding nothing of interest in the room, upon discovering that his this other door leads outside, he circles back around into the house and winds up in the study with Will. Meanwhile, with my new lead pointing me to the basement, I run in, see the horrible thing taking shape, botch the absolute fuck out of my save against, you know, seeing unsightly things, and end up crawling into the fetal position while crying and losing two D10s of sanity. Henderson, meanwhile, picks up a book off the shelf and flips it open to a random page. What the hell kind of gobbledygook is this anyway? How are you supposed to pronounce this? al wai al katulu fagen kiklikikfar al agasen fal dipwa He returns to Will, completely oblivious to the betentacled beast he just conjured into existence behind him. <laughs> Cockeyed eyebrow, barely visible above the rim of his sunglasses. What does that even mean? What's the point of wasting paper with that sort of nonsense? Will... 
having barely failed his sanity check after that, loses five points from his score and points behind him muttering something about a thing that should not be. Henderson chuckles and says how he's got not going to fall for that one again. Last time he did the tranny, he was in the... What the hell? Last time he did the tranny, he was interrogating vis-a-vis -vis his lawn gnomes, had her pimp beat the shit out of him and steal his wallet. So he leads Will to the kitchen, leaving the monster to its own devices. I remember struggling with that sentence when I was pre-reading this damn thing. Uh -huh. In the kitchen, Henderson continues to be disappointed with the continuing lack of clues, while the professor is overjoyed to discover that the liquor cabinet was never emptied by the previous owners of the house and helps himself to a bottle. Then, the local cultists, getting a report Henders of Henderson's location, proceeded to kick in the door to come kill him. Three of them are promptly eaten by the thing Henderson summoned in the study, and while they're screaming, the two of them take a peek at the next room and Henderson smashes all the alcohol and lights it off while they run out the back door. The abomination in the basement with me does nothing of importance while I regain my wits and attempt to leave. I burst out the way I came, see the fire, and immediately have a second breakdown because of a pre-existing phobia of fire, which I randomly rolled for, and then die burning, screaming in pain and terror because of it. Much like the cultists and the monsters that followed. Meanwhile, Will is asking Henderson why his car only has the Credence Clearwater Revival playing ever. It turns out that it's because the CD is jammed in there and the radio is broke, so Henderson just never bothered to fix it because Credence is awesome. So they ride away happily listening to Around the Bend while I fucking died for the third time in the last hour. At this point, I was beginning to get a little pissy and break my promise to myself not to let the game get to me. I roll up another character determined to do something of consequence in this session. I end up with a nasty street fighting thug named Patrick. This is Patrick. Huh. Somebody in a yellow robe gave Pat a pile of money and a picture of Henderson asking him to make sure he disappeared. Now, normally Pat would think twice about accepting such a shady deal since he preferred to rough people up since it couldn't get you 25 to life. However, it was a lot of money and I was getting to be very bitter about the whole dying every fucking session thing, as well as today. So Pat agreed to do the job. I figured that this would end with me either killing Henderson or us getting into a scuffle and then Pat switching teams. Oh, how wrong I was. Turns out Henderson wasn't a particularly tough fellow to find, since there's only one crazy old fucker with a mohawk and a Hawaiian shirt running around reeking of cheap whiskey and porcelain. When Pat caught up with him, Henderson was taking a piss in an alleyway on the cardboard home of a hobo that just tried to mug him and is now dead. As he finishes up, Pat taps him on the shoulder and he turns. You Henderson? Indeed I am. And then Pat's right hook hits him in the face and smashes his aviator shades into a useless mess of metal and glass shards. At which point, Henderson very calmly pulls it off his face and pulls out a spare pair of shades puts them on, and comments how, well, that was kind of rude. Then Pat caught him with a left hook. Henderson then tosses the second useless pair of sunglasses aside, dons a third set from somewhere, and then says, now, son, I've only got one more pair on me, and I've got considerably less patience than that. What the bloody all-loving fuck hell are you doing? I got good money from a man in yellow saying that you're a no-good son of a bitch who needs to be put down. At this, Henderson puts a very surprised and concerned face. A man in yellow, you say. Son, I'm afraid that there's been a very big mistake here. I've been lied to? Nah, you're pretty spot on, Henderson replies, before shooting out both my kneecaps with his concealed handgun and followed up by a second pair to the balls. But no man gets between me and me wee men. He then walks out the alleyway, leaving me to bleed to death, and everyone at the table kind of looks shot at the fact that Henderson just blatantly executed a player character right there. I will admit to flipping my shit a bit while the GM went to consult his notes as I confronted him. Why the fuck did you just kill me? What? You just fucking shot me dead, Waffle House. I just shot a random guy who threatened my life and started trying to beat the shit out of me in the middle of a crime scene where I totally just murdered a hobo. 
Yes, yes, I did shoot you. What possible reason could I have to not shoot you? It's me, you cock. I've already died three times today. But that's metagaming. He went to make the call for takeout that night, knowing that I would have hit him if I stayed. So, soliloquy, we're out of game now. Before anybody starts saying anything, I know getting violently angry over a game is stupid. That's why I walked away before it got the better of me. Nobody in the group except the GM was a, quote, that guy. But we all had a tendency or two that could have put us into that category. Waffle House Million had a thing about the rules and about characters that I'm pretty sure are signs of his OCD coming to the front. It's a really mild case, so you wouldn't even know he had it if you didn't notice little things, like the fact that he never has the volume set for an odd number. If there are rules in place for a game, he expects them to be followed as written. If somebody modifies the rules for some reason, that's fine. As long as he knows it in, in advance, there's a change. The dice land as the dice land, and he tends to be very chill on the whole, as long as you don't manage to piss him off. Me, I like being a team player. I honestly hate being a multi or I hate playing a multiplayer game if it means going against my friends. I think this quirk may have eventually rubbed off on Waffle House as far as video games are concerned, but I digress. So one of my sore spots is basically infighting. If two people start to have a fight in character or out of character, it ruins the fun for me. I don't give a shit if the random kobolds we're beating up are having a bad day. I give no shits about some random guy on a server I keep sniping, but the, that guy I'm sh it, bleh, but that guy. I'm shooting isn't Dave, my friend, who let me move in after I had a bad breakup. That kobold isn't Mike's new player character. Personally, I think this is where the line between that guy and the rest of us is drawn. We're all geeks and nerds, given what gets posted on slash TG and 4chan at a large on a daily basis. I think it's fair to say that we're all assholes to some degree as well. It's totally true. We all have uh, in us some quality or two that might be detestable. The difference between us and that guy is that we're trying to at least be acceptable, if not good, but now I've gotten a bit off topic a bit. I opted to go for a quick drive to get the pizza since it was a bit cheaper and we were taking a break anyways. Waffle House decides to go with me, which kind of defeated the purpose of me trying to get away and clear my head. On the way was probably the time where I, we actually became friends. You see, up until this point, we've just been kind of hanging out in the same group, playing games and shit, but on this day, I don't know what prompted it, but I got angry and I kind of yelled at him. He took it in stride, came back with a reasoned argument, and let the matter drop. On the way back, we bickered over stupid shit, but I think out of all the crazy shit I've seen and done with him, near-death experiences, epic games, land parties, late nights, having to go help a friend, that time we talked down a jumper off of a bridge, this was the one that stuck with me the most. Partly because I'd never before seen anybody just let their guard down and be honest like that i won't share what we talked about except this he actually bought saint anger waffle house millionaire then replies to this thread for fuck's sake are you ever going to let me live that down that cd was fucking garbage and you know it saint saint anger is a is a cd album from a certain band that you will know in a minute if you don't i didn't at the time Fuck, Metallica is pretty consistent, awesome, consistently awesome. How the hell was I supposed to know that Saiyan Anger was that album that they were going to fuck up? It was two fucking years before we even met, and I already apologized for it. Make all the fucking excuses you want, man. The truth's out there now. Now the all, now all the internet's done goof. But back to the story at hand. We get back to the table, and the GM has got some new stuff lined up. I decided to opt out of re-rolling and rejoining, even though we were only, like, halfway through the session, because I wasn't ready to have another character killed off just yet. Will and Henderson bounce around, trying to find a lead to work with the whole revenge plot they're kind of going on. And they end up meeting up with Jimmy to try and talk, to, talk his girlfriend out of being a crazy cultist. Which ended up fantastic. Jimmy basically agrees to go to one of the meetings if she promised to seriously have a chat with him afterwards about the whole joining a cult thing. She agreed, basically telling him that he'd totally change his mind once he saw what it was all about. Jimmy was a smart boy, and he called Henderson's cell phone for backup in case things went south. So pretty soon, Henderson and Will are sitting outside the church on the curb, waiting. Henderson breaks the silence. Man, I fucking hate stakeouts. They aren't that bad. Well, last time I was on a stakeout, two of my friends got killed and your, your bar burnt ba down. Does this shit happen on a regular basis with you? Well, not causing it. Well, not well, not usually. I remember I got arrested about a year ago for 
scaring a cook shitless. What? What? Why? I told the motherfucker that I was allergic to olives, but I get olives on everything. I could have fucking died if I didn't check it out. There's a silence. Okay. Uh, fuck it. There's a Best Buy and a video rental place of another sorts around the corner. I vote we get one of those portable DVD things in a movie. Fuck yes. Shit, we're just here in case Jimmy calls us, right? Let's get baked and watch something funny. So they went and got a copy of Grandma's Boy, got high, and laughed their asses off outside the church. In public, outside a church, they're supposed to be watching for cultists that already know what Henderson looks like. Surprisingly, nothing comes of this until Jimmy calls them from inside the church. Apparently, they just called up some kind of demon and told it to eat his girlfriend and him as a sacrifice to their god. His girlfriend, shocked at the sudden change in tone from the companionable, welcoming air that was there before, suddenly realizes that cults aren't as awesome as she thought. And that's when Henderson and Will run inside, guns drawn. Jimmy, wise man he is, grabs his girlfriend and ducks while full auto shotgun spray kills every motherfucker in the room. They go outside and get into the car. Henderson starts it up while Will keeps the arson streak alive and sets the building on fire. As they pull away, Carrie, Jimmy's girlfriend, goes all, My hero! on them, and soon the two freaked teenagers are getting busy in the back seat. Will looks shocked while Henderson lights up the bong lights the bong up and starts hotboxing while cranking up the stereo. <laughs> Which is when they get when they pass a cop going in the opposite direction. To this day I giggle to myself, thinking about what that cop must have seen been thinking when he saw this. There is Henderson driving, quote-unquote, the car, taking a hit off of Bong the size of a god. Next to him is a dude who looks like a slightly less fat Kevin Smith looking bored out the window. There's so much smoke inside that you'd think the car itself was on fire, and there's a couple of people obviously fucking in the back seat. I'd like to think that he was thinking about his family, or going to watch a hockey game at the bar with his friends, or maybe finally asking that cute waitress out. I just... Some part of me desperately wants to know why it took him two blocks to process what he just saw. <laughs> Henderson just keeps going, not a care in the world. Cop turns around and starts to follow him. Henderson keeps going. Cop turns on his lights. Henderson keeps going. Sir, pull over the vehicle, the cop says in his loudspeaker. Henderson pulls into a drive through The cops walk up halfway through an order for tacos and politely asks what the fuck he's doing. Henderson responds with a hold on a sec gesture and finishes his order. Then he asks if the cop wants anything. The cock the cop <laughs> <laughs> the cop asks him to please please step out of the car, sir, and offers of a chalupa are denied. Henderson gets out of the car, a plume of smoke accompanying his exit. Jimmy and Carrie are kinda of blushing and avoiding eye contact, mostly having recuperated. Will, having seen three cosmic horrors in the last day, killed a bunch of people, and still coping with the loss of his bar, apparently has no more fucks to give. He just sits there, high off his ass, listening to Fortunate Son. The cop interrogates him as to why he didn't pull over, and Henderson responds that it was because he was colorblind, and that he didn't realize there was a cop behind him. The cop asked why he smelled like weed, and Henderson replied that it was because he just smoked a huge fucking bowl. <laughs> but it's cool because he has one of those medical licenses. When asked about the kids in the back seat, he stated confusion and asked what kids before looking back and seeing Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, when'd you get here? You, you came to pick us up. No shit! He turned to the cop. Tell you what, memory is the first thing to go, officer. Followed right by the memory. So, how can I help you, officer? After replaying the conversation a few more times the cop made will drive and they m left relatively unmolested with their tacos <laughs> and that is the end of director's cut part three that might have been 10 minutes a little bit oh well it's all good still kind of hard to top the necro blunt from last chapter though it's true <sighs> oh my god, it's 4.15 already. Yep. And we got one more thing I to cover. I still have half a ballot we'll... to get through. Yeah. <laughs> but do it. Get it done. Yeah, you I get know. through it while I, I 
read my little novel here about Toho. The fate of America is in your hands. Yes. Sorry. Not just Yeah, no, tell me about Toho. I want I want to see this. Okay. Well, Toho is an indie bullet hell shooter featuring an all-female cast of humans and evil spirits known as yokai. All of the events in this 24-game series take place in the land of Gensokyo, where beings from different legends and folklore call home. So, evil spirits, deities, the souls of the dead, dragon people, cat people, swamp monsters, fox people, Ooh, fairies, people. and humans. Fox people. Huh? Sorry, I'm interjecting at cat oh. people and fox people. Yeah, they're there. All of these live in this sealed away plot of land. And while humans do live here, they're the minority. So, they get eaten a lot. Yay, humans being the minority. Yay! Death to Magic all humans. Magic and stuff. Death to all humans. <laughs> I mean, um... Oh, and it's probably... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... Well, no, Death to all accurate. humans. Death to all <laughs> humans. <laughs> Crap. And, as I said, this is a bullet hell shooter. But the rules of this land, thanks to the local protector slash shrine maiden having pretty much all the authority in this place because of the seal, are as such. Any conflict must be settled through non-lethal Donmaku, so basically the bullet hell aspect. The loser bullet must hell. concede to the winner's demands whether or not they're physically stronger than their opponent. This is to give humans a fair chance at surviving an encounter with a yokai. And the series gained a cult following over the years and started on the Japan-only PC-98 series of computers. It's since moved to Windows, and we're getting a PS4 game from Toho very, very soon. I think, like, February of next year. It's worth saying that this particular game is not an official one. It's a fan game about, I think it's a versus game. So it's a bullet hell versus game. I think it's couch co-op or couch multiplayer. I may be wrong. I haven't really looked at too much info on it, but holy shit. Very excited to see that. I got to show you guys gameplay of Toho at some point. It's, it's very pretty you stuff. Totally should. Yes. And Sounds maybe that cool. would explain more of what Toho is rather than my little short blurb. Well, cool. speaking of short blurbs and new games, I do actually have one more thing I can post in. Okay. Um, because I pulled up the Humble Bundle and just because I absolutely love Double Fine Adventure, or rather, Double Fine Studios, who made that. Um, Double Fine is the host of a smaller but kind of indie uh, developer convention that was in San Francisco just this past Saturday, the 5th called Day of the Devs, uh, obviously after the Day of the Dead. Um, it, they had a lot more games at this event than I thought they did, uh, one of which was actually Secret Legend, which we've talked about in the past. Um, but they have a video, one that we might be able to include in the, the um, notes on YouTube and SoundCloud, okay. it, that showcases a lot of these games in, you know, montage fashion. But... Uh, we're still waiting on results of exactly what cool shit happened at Day of the Devs, what people are saying about different games, but um, whether it just be because Double Fine hosts this or because of the uh, group they cater to or just it's a good time of year or something, there were a lot of games that looked really interesting in that little video. So I'm kind of excited to see what notes we'll get back from people, but you know, being that it is election day, it's an election weekend, and a lot of the news, even in the gaming world, is kind of stalled out or taken up by that, uh, we're still getting information. So hopefully next week we can talk a lot more about that. But yeah, it's not as big as E3 or PAX or anything like that, but it is a gaming expo, and there was a lot more there than I thought. So good stuff, especially if you like the smaller indie games and what's going on there so you can check it out yourself hopefully we can talk about it next week it'll be in the description if we if i can get that link shro yeah let me find it okay 
And you can also find the, uh, oh, the Sombra post I made in the description as well. So let me know what you think of Sombra, and I am still very curious about what people think. So far, should the we post the picture of Furry Sombra? Been... Sorry, what? It should we post Furry Sombra? Um, if it's not porn, sure. I, I posted it in the chat like three days ago. I, I don't. Rem is it? Listen, is it I barely or remember or what? what happened like half an hour ago. I'm not gonna remember about <laughs> something that happened three years ago. Brian, where are you? In Canada. Oh, Canada, where all of the USA is moving to. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It'll be fun, guys. Oh, yeah. I'd love to live in Finally Canada. Finally eat poutine. Poutine La and poutine. Tim Hortons and maple syrup that's apparently actually good. And fries the supreme at Taco Bell. I, I'm bummed we don't have that. Fucking hell, mm. Taco Bell. Get on mm -hmm. that shit in America. We would love that. Yep. We would love to shove our face full of fattening potatoes. Yep, yep, yep. I actually God. have another Canadian friend that was like, oh my god, who's telling you that Taco Bell is good even with their crazy shitty poutine? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I like Taco Bell and I like poutine. I, I can't really argue this. It's like, there's something wrong with you. Exactly. <laughs> like, yes, yes, I know. I'm surprised America doesn't have poutine. Since we love I mean, potatoes, we love gravy, we love cheese. Make it happen, like, America. What's, Come on. Yeah, what's up with that? I don't fucking know. Such <laughs> bullshit. Anyway, we're just about out of time, so let's uh Let's let wrap you... this up, people. I, like, I yeah. think I'm out of notes. So. Yeah, we're out of notes. So thank you guys notes so much completely for done. joining us. Joining us today on this podcast, and thank you to Shro and Brian for coming on here talking about shit thank you all so much guys this has been a great episode we will see you again next time until then it is the uh, american apocalypse i would it say is the, the first american apocalypse. Day of the american apocalypse so oh, yes you'll probably see brian again sooner than you'll see me or shro because we'll, we'll be dead <laughs> <laughs> well i mean there's that that's gonna happen yeah exactly so we'll see right Apocalypse. you gotta in hope any the case... jet stream doesn't waft up the nuclear radiation yeah. exactly yes so let's wrap it up okay i, we, we I was trying to do that, that and then we got ready. into the topic of american apocalypse anyway well, this has been episode now? 25 of the Insomniacs Anonymous podcast. We are Insomniacs Anonymous, and we are tired and going to bed. Good night. Good night. There's so many circles. The talking of the circles. I know. And he said things, and and then he said more things. It's Listen, almost guys, like, honestly, and like whoever ends up winning this election, I just want to let you guys know that you guys can definitely crash. Crash on my couch. I almost said crouch you. on my couch. I mean, you could <laughs> crouch on my crouch couch. On your couch. Crouch on the couch. But at least oh it my. ended up saying crouch on my couch and not crouch on my crotch. Because that's I mean, another way, way different. That's, I mean, that's I would would just an both, upgrade but... from the, cra the couch, right? I mean, either or. It could be, you know, put your crotch on the couch or, you know, crouch your crouch. No, crouch your, your crotch, crotch on the, on the couch, couch. With your. With your while you're laying down on my couch. couch. I exactly, <laughs> and I think we have our episode name right there. Yeah. That's amazing. All right, guys. At the very least, Thank the uh, <laughs> opening brain gag, hurts. whatever that would be. <laughs> oh, you, know, you guys. You guys are funny. Yeah. Well, we've always been funny, but with you, we've been funnier. Funny looking. Funny looking. <laughs> what? what? Why do you say Snack that? talk. You know I'm sensitive about my appearance. <laughs> Oh, I just suck. It just got awkward. And dick farts. <laughs> dick farts. And then it stopped being as awkward. <laughs> and then she farts an EMP blast into the crowd. Farts an EMP blast into the crowd. Farts an EMP blast into the crowd. Farts, 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 farts.